Hi, I'm Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with Andrew from Rollercoaster Digital. We're going to hear about his startup story. Hi. So, hi. Um, yeah, I guess I'm a, I'm a broad and, born and bred Canberran, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I started... My story is a little bit different to most, I think. I'm not from a specifically technical background. I started in live production. Um, I have a uh, public relations and strategic comms background. Mm -hmm. Um, which uh, I went through uh, through the agency path and worked, worked with an agency, national agency, for a little while, and um, ended up working with a group of so, sort of small businesses trying to launch products and and um, I guess systems of their own, and really getting into um, part of preparing them to be sold and preparing them for the media and for the story was actually developing their product with them and I found that that was actually something I was really passionate about and I really really enjoyed doing that with them and um, I guess combining that that back end of, of the communication strategy um, and saying okay so who's your who's your audience who's your customer what, you know and then going that next step and saying but what do they really want nice. um, which I think it, it for me, that's the really exciting bit is, you know, when you sit there and you go, I really love your idea, I really love where you think you're going with this, but no one's going to pay money for it. So let's, that, that's where it gets exciting for me, turning it into something that you can produce in a cost-effective way, mm -hmm. um, that you can sell in that people are actually going to want to pay their money to own it. Yes. Um, and then... Uh, I guess doing something new and exciting with that at the same time, um, I, I've always loved, uh, I guess, sort of tinkering with things, you know, ever mm -hmm. since I was a kid I'd be, you know, breaking things apart and trying to smash them together and, you know, starting fires in, on bench tops and that sort of stuff. Um, and I guess finding new ways to use things, finding new solutions with things that already exist and, you know, piecing things together in a different way to try and solve a problem, um, yep. I, th that's what gets me up in the morning. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we ended up, a um, uh, long-term kind of uh, friend and colleague, uh, Chris Shackleton and I, uh, we ended up um, with this half idea, which was actually more of a question as to, you know, why out-of-home advertising was still so boring. <laughs> um, yes. And so a few years ago, so Roller Coaster was sort of born in um, in 2012 mm -hmm. um, as an idea with, with one idea which has become Hive, our, our content platform, um, which is so much more than we ever imagined it being um, at the beginning, but it was all very much, uh, it was all very much based on that I don't think anyone's actually thought about what they could do with this. Um, I don't think anyone's thought about what advertising in a public space could be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, the traditional putting posters and stickers up kind of model is is a really labour intensive way to do things, and it's yes. a really, uh, from my point of view, I would never recommend it to a client. I just I just left agency work at that point, and I would never recommend it to a client because you just get lost above it, uh, amongst everything else. And if you're on a bus or a taxi, you get exhaust and road grime and everything on it, and your brand's dead and nothing's working anymore. Um, so we started breaking that down and you know piecing together the bits of technology that we'd worked with and the way you know we knew we could do things with with what was out there and trying to turn that into something new that we'd never seen before. And I guess um, Hive was, um, it was intended to be almost a pioneer in the in the digital out of home space. Um, and that's where, I guess it would have been, and we can come back to this bit um, if you'd like, but basically our problem was we couldn't uh, get the funds together that we needed to yes. go out in a, in a big way to do that. Um, being a pioneer, especially in the Australian market, in it, um, well, even even the insurances and those sorts of costs were prohibitive to us being able to yeah. get out there. So. And, and the advertising industry in Australia does not really invest in startups and new ideas very well. It, it yeah. takes things from overseas and it repurposes, but Absolutely. it has not really invested in 
in developing new forms of, of uh, you know, public engagement. Yeah, and I mean, uh, with, with that product specifically, we never intended, um, we, we never wanted to be another advertising network. We wanted to be the platform provider. Yeah. We wanted to be the technology. You know, that's what we knew. That's what we developed. We didn't want to be going out there, kind of. Um, I guess uh, we didn't want to be the ones doing the pitch for the five-year contract on on the bus network or on the no. uh, on the shelters or, or the you know the park benches. That that wasn't what we were trying to do with um, with the product and, and with where we were taking things. But um, that meant that we were in a position where we were a long way behind mm. um, because uh, the the networks that we wanted to talk to were saying, sure, as soon as you can show us and prove to us that you've got 500 units in, in a field, you know, we'll buy 5,000. That's great. Getting to that first step, though, meant basically we had to rethink what we were doing and we turned it. We turned it. So you did a pivot. We did. Um, mm. We turned the technology into an engine that now drives and, and will continue to drive other parts of our products, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to see it still out there as a content network um, with the smart city push um, all around yes. the world, but um, uh, signage that uh, responds to location and, and can and seasonal settings and, and anything like that, time of yeah, day, all those sorts, of, all things those sorts and, of things, and has a dynamic content engine behind it, but is also able to work completely separate of the network based on what you last told it to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's where it, Hive is actually where we came up with the term the Internet of Agents. And that's what we, at the end of the day, that's what we're really about. It's not things. Things go out there and sit there and wait to be told what to do. Yep. The Internet of Agents is about, you know, you give, the, you give a piece of technology a brief and it does, it does what it's told until you, you, um, you give it another brief. And that's, yep. you know, that's not just being on or off. That's thinking in its environment. That's, you know, yep. it's still working to its full capacity without needing to um, needing to have its hand held. And yeah, so it has a level of decision making, you know, within yeah, the parameters that, you set. Yeah. Yeah, and um, without without going back to I guess the to the central point and, you know, the the other thing for us was agents can interact with each other. Because we're starting to see a push towards, you know, things that are actually smart and will sit in a market and or sit in an environment rather an ecosystem. And, yeah, yeah. And and interact with, you know, the ecosystem that they're a part of. We're not seeing all that many who can talk to each other. No, not yet. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's really where we we're excited about taking things and where, where we see um, I guess the next the next step and the next real benefit for, for the people using the technology. Yeah, when your shower talks to you, your your kettle and lets you know when you turn it off and turns on the kettle yeah. and says, "Okay, I know he's gonna want a, a, a you know a hot drink in three minutes." There's things yeah. like that. So th there are you know sort of like an infinite number of permutations in in the home, in the public spaces, in your vehicle, absolutely office. Yeah, yeah. and um, where where we got to the protocol level with all of this was that I really hate the idea of needing a hub to do all that. You yes. Know, why can't if my shower has to talk to the hub has to talk to the kettle? That's that's one step too far um, mm. for our way of thinking. You know, they should be able to talk to each other and take the information they need and discard the rest. But also to take the information they need, alter it based on their own function and their own set of instructions, and feed that back out to to what's happening. Yeah. So um, it's 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 virtually an intelligent system. network. Yeah. 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 But that, yeah, is also um, somewhat able to kind of create its own environment rather than being rather than being defined, and that's um, it's a little bit. It, it, it's an easy way to scare people when you start talking about it like that. Um, it starts getting a little bit Skynet, if we're honest. Um, well, but well, it's people, also people start subscribing sentience to the network. Yeah, and, and you can have a network that exhibits it, it looks like it's sentience when actually it isn't. Yes, that's it, and that's exactly it, and that's that's really where where we're trying to draw the line, mm -hmm. is, and, and and we're saying this is the line in the sand. This is this is where we're currently capable as 
as humans, as societies, you know, of taking technology, and we should be taking it right up to here, um, but allowing them to create their own rules. You know, we're still a long way from that, and that's still it, it, the human still needs to be the centre of of any yes. technological ecosystem, and, and changing that at th at this point is certainly not something that that we think is. It, it is beneficial to what we're doing. Yeah. You know, we we haven't adapted as people yet um, to be, I guess, uh, ready to to take orders from a machine, mm -hmm. um, or or to have our behaviour changed by machines. I guess is is a better way of putting that. So yeah. So 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 where uh, is roller coaster at the moment in that journey? Because that's a very very big vision. It is a very big vision. Change. <laughs> yeah. um, at the moment, we do um, our, our our strategy is to is to fracture off um, parts of, of that hole and and turn them into a product. Mm -hmm. um, that's our way of, of learning about them ourselves. Um, that's our way of, of testing the theories that we that we do have about um, about what we're doing and, and the way that will work in the, in the real world um, because it's very different looking. I guess at at something on a screen or, or or on a piece of paper or a whiteboard when you're drawing out circles and lines and triangles to you know, yes. say this is where we're going, um, and actually using it. So um, at the moment we're working a lot on on the individual parts that will feed mm -hmm. um, that higher level vision and, and yeah we're just we're trying to make some we're trying to make some baby steps towards. Um, Really driving that um, that shift, and yeah. you know, it, we we think it's important that a look honestly a that we're sustainable as a company. You know, we can't rely on um, uh, I guess on being on the breadline and, and you know walking out with with hat in hand all the time. Um, and b it's really important to us that we start getting things out there and showing people what, what we can do and start um, saying, you know, it, this is the way we think um, events should be should be run. You know, it's been too hard for way too long. We can do better than this, you know. Yeah. You, anyone who's um, been to an event has used a crummy event app. Um, anyone who's presented at, at an event has gone through the awful process of submitting a, a, a presentation and having it show up nothing like what you designed it to be and missing missing slides and missing bits off the end you know we've said we can fix that and part of fixing that is building some of the tech underneath that knows where people are and knows what they're doing based on their devices you know we're not saying we want to track the individual we're saying we want to track you by the things you say you want to do so if you want to go to a session whether you're going as an attendee or as a presenter we can make that experience the most beneficial for you by creating a product that works on both sides of the fence, that doesn't have a horrid kind of rope bridge with you know yes. a guy standing in the middle trying to hold it together. <laughs> so your life. events is one area you've picked off. Yep. There's a couple of other areas I think you've picked off as well. There sure. are, yeah. So um, one thing, our main focus at the moment, um, I guess product-wise, um, is we really want to replace the business card. Um, the business card is just old and it's awful and it, it's handing someone your business card actually creates more work than than it solves in a lot of ways because the way we work now is we have a whole bunch of social media that we need to connect on you know if I'm if I'm meeting someone um, and I'm overseas you, or you know even if they're just in a different time zone whatever it is you know we might want to we might want to Skype or we want to you know use a different platform other than the phone other than email to communicate. At the moment you hand over a business card and you take that and you spend, you know, 10 to 15 minutes a person sometimes punching those details in, sending off an invite through LinkedIn, finding them on Twitter because, you know, oh this person's really aligned with what I need to be saying for my own brand or for my own, you know, yes. for my business. Um, and what we're saying is, look, we can create a platform where you meet someone and you go, this is great, I'm really glad to have met you Craig. Um, I've just sent you an invite um, through Jar Jar Connect. It's got all my details on it. Yeah. You know, 
I met you. We've met in a. We met at a at a networking function, which you know all of us have to go to. Yes. Um, and rather than spending, kind of that time and breaking the flow of conversation at the time, bang, the invite sent. You'll get a notification in charge that says, you know, Andrew wants to connect. He wants to share his his business card with you, um, which has my number and my email. Mm -hmm. But I also want to add you on Skype because yep. I'm always all over the place. And I'd love to be able to just quickly grab you and you know when I'm overseas and have a chat. But um, you know we're both quite active on on our social media or on Twitter, so you know definitely want to follow you there. So that invite sent. That's that's done. Um, and uh, I want to add you as a contact on LinkedIn. Yep. Using using the authorization in the app, everything that you've set up, those invites are actually sent for you. So you get mm -hmm. this card, and all you have to do is say, "Yeah, I'm happy with that," or you know. Maybe I added you to my Facebook as well, and you've and you've gone. Oh no, actually, that's just for friends and family. So yeah. I'll turn Facebook off, but the rest of them accept, and it's all done for you. Yes, and it manages your contacts. It manages all that, and it ties in with the events too. It ties it ties in with events. Yeah. It ties in with being able to connect those environments as well, yeah. um, because what we've done on the other side of it is is everyone's tagged. So if you're at an event and there's an event in your calendar. You can go. Oh, who was that person that I met at that event on the fifth of April? At, you know, bang. Look, look by date, look by location. Oh, that was them. Great. Need to give them a call, and you're done. Yeah. Um, it's it's basically kind of taking the tearing the corner off the off the business card for the you know who I want to meet and and who I don't want to follow up. You know, just had to take that to be polite, and it's. It's bringing that into that next generation. You know, yeah. so many of us are living out of our smartphones because we never, you know, we're never really tied down to a desk or tied down to a single location anymore. So, you know, we should be able to work with the tools that we have to make things easier. And that's yeah. that's really what what we try to do and try to drive. Yeah, so so you've already talked about one of the big challenges that you face so far, which is that money thing. So yeah. you had to do a bit of you had to do a pivot. What other challenges have you sort of faced over the last few years in the journey? Um, I think it's a really, whenever you're starting a company, um, when it, whenever you're trying to start an, a project um, from scratch, and, you, and especially when you're trying to do something a little bit different, there's a real self-education process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think no matter how many times, you know, no, no matter how serial an entrepreneur you, you like to call yourself, there's always a learning when you, when you take that next step, um, when, you, when you try that next thing. Um, so for us, um, a lot of that has been about, while we might have known what was, what was technically possible, what we could do, where, where we could go, and what we were really hoping to, to achieve out of it, Learning to learning to manage things in the real world um, was it, it was something that did take us a little time to kind of grapple with, and yep. you know, um, one of the biggest parts of that is how do you share a vision when you're trying to get people on in an early stage? Um, roller coaster to this point is is more or less bootstrapped. Um, mm -hmm. We've taken uh, we were lucky enough to receive a, an icon grant at the end of last year. Yep. Um, but apart from that, for one project, you know, we've spent nearly three years, or, or just over three years now, I think, being completely bootstrapped. So, bringing people on when when financial resources are not a thing that you have to lean on, you know, how do you create that dream and that vision that you know two people of uh, you, you know whatever your founding group is that they've developed that but then you need to go outside that to yes. grow your skill set and go outside it again how do you communicate that bit how do you communicate what you're really about and what you're trying to um, trying to achieve in the in the long term as well as why it's going to be really really good fun doing the nitty-gritty until you get to that point yeah um, so that's been a really big one for us mm -hmm. um, the other thing I think something that that we have tried really hard to to become good at and to balance is the best way to set up a company and the best way to set up 
securely, um, I guess, uh, the way you protect your ideas. Yep. Um, we're very firm believers in sharing what we're doing, finding collaborators, finding people who said, I've tried that, it doesn't work, and then pushing them for that. Okay, yeah, great. Why didn't it work? Yes. Uh, you know, never using that as a, oh, well, we'll throw that one in the bin, but ra rather kind of taking that and saying, well, okay, it didn't work for you, um, but we're still going to back ourselves in. But if, if you'd be willing to share why why you just decided to discard that, then, you know, that, that would be something very helpful to us. Yeah. So that, that's that been something that's been very hard, particularly particularly when we started. It's getting much better here in Canberra now, but when we started, it was very, very closed all, very clamshell. What are you doing? Oh, I've got this idea for a thing. What do you do? Um, <laughs> okay. Um, that, that's a, it's a really interesting conversation to try yes. and have with people and to try and share ideas when you're in this sort of, oh, no, you're going to steal my idea, you can't, oh, I'm not going to let you in. Um, but then on the flip side of that, making sure that we were moving so quickly that no one could catch us and yes. that our IP actually is secure and we are protected and doing that when you are, you know, dragging the oily rag on a shoestring sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it makes it tough because IP protection is quite expensive in Australia. It and if really you want to go global, it is a nightmare. Yeah, um, trying to do that. And, and one, of, one of the products that we, we developed, we, we made a decision. We had a lot of advice from some really, really um, experienced people in um, technology, particularly hardware, software, hybrid systems, yep. and how you protect that. And they said, look, if you can make it happen, you need to go out there and start the process now before you go to market, before yes. you even have the product physically ready to, to be a thing of any sort. Um, and we, we hurt from that, you know, we, we don't shy away from the fact that that did hurt us as a company. Um, hopefully in the long run, you know, we've been able to push past that, we've been able to, to get over that and it will be beneficial. Um, but in the short term, there's a lot of things we could have done with that money that we that we yeah. spent on that on that process on on that patent that we wouldn't uh, that we didn't have access to because we we went down that road. Yeah, you, you can end up spending all your money on the IP and not having anything left to commercialise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, luckily a lot of our a lot of that was uh, that product was de designed to be hardware agnostic. Right. You know we. It needed certain things, but the way it was written was that you know it was software driven using hardware systems. So you know we didn't need to do a lot of prototyping necessarily to, to turn it into a, a functioning product. Well, that's but good. but we could have done a bunch of custom hardware prototyping if we'd had the money there. If that makes sense. So yeah. he, he, learning to weigh up. I, I guess the lesson from it was. And the thing that you know, I would encourage anyone starting to do is really work on that. I'm not going to say a, a pro and con list. I hate that, <laughs> but but finding that balance and and trusting your gut on that balance. You know, look at it, uh, looking at it, and saying, well, you know, if I saw someone trying this, would I be interested enough to try and steal it? Yes. To try and duplicate it, to try and take what they're doing and add to it. And if your answer is yes, and you know it should be yes, um, if what you're doing is worthwhile, you need to weigh up. Well, am I better off getting there first and being out there and having no one able to catch me because I'm that far ahead and I'm making that much money by that point that I can protect it and everyone's still too far behind me? Yeah. Or do I need to protect it from the start? Do I need to know that I'm secure with my idea? With with that concept behind it, with the it, what is patentable about it, mm. and being able to go, okay, now I have that, I'm secure enough that I can spend the time in getting this right, because this is something that I can't, you know, I can't minimum viable product this. This just needs to be yes. out there and be right. And that's yes. essentially what the decision came down to for us. It was a matter of, no, we can't, we can't do this the shortcut way and not be crucified in the market. Yeah. So we need to be secure. We need to know that we can take the time we need to take to make this happen. And you have to, pa if you're going down the patent route, then you have to patent before it becomes public. Because it's very easy, even if you've 
expose it to too many people, to yes. actually kill your ability to patent something. And that's always, I've found, a delicate balance because yep. you need to sometimes show it to people to get support for it and to test it to make yep. sure it's something that's worth doing. But if, you, but if you go out there too much, then your patent becomes impossible and that's a really yeah. delicate balance and in some it, products. And it is becoming harder and harder in terms of, you know, what's deemed, um, what's deemed fair game, I guess, yes. you know. What's deemed just general use, and you know, and that's that's something you know. There are there are many many businesses now that have what seems to be a revolutionary piece of technology that is actually just fair use of a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, well, there's prior art. There's previous patents or, or yeah. previous things that have been in the market. Yeah. So that yeah. that's a tricky space. So, so, so um, aside from the, that whole IP protection area, what other lessons would you kind of pass on to people who are thinking of starting up a business? Um, the biggest one is don't do it alone. Mm -hmm. find, find people who are as excited about what you're trying to do as you are about the specific thing that you're doing. Yep. Find people who want to come on the journey with you because of what you're, uh, 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 I guess, of how passionate you are about where you want to take it. Yep. About, you know, you know what the dream is. It, it, it's okay to be a dreamer. Mm -hmm. You know, think big. Don't, don't think about the little bit. Don't think about the little achievable in the next six months bit. You know, it, you need to sell the dream. You need to sell people. And you need to find the people who are really going to get behind you. And really want to help you take that to that next step. Yes. Because you are going to misstep. You are going to have those setbacks where you go, we put everything we had into this and we got it wrong. And the only way to know that we got it wrong was to actually get to this point. And yeah. Has no it. one want to use it? Yeah. To test it and say, oh, we left out this really big thing. You know, you're going to have those moments, and that's part of the that's part of the the road. You know. It's gutting, but it's a lot of fun at the same time, you know? Um, so the way to get through that, that, that certainly I've found and we've found as, as roller coaster, is that by having the team, you know? Mm. We sit there and we throw things at the wall for a little while and we turn around and we all go, okay, where to from here? Yep. And they're really, they're some of the most fun conversations we've had as a company. You know, all right, so we've got to here. And, you know, I, I'm hesitant to use the word pivot, but it's that, it's that evolution of an idea. It's that yes. evolution of a, of a product, of a technology that, or, you know. Or refinement sometimes. Or refinement, yes. yeah. Even before anyone sees it as a yes. product um, and has the opportunity, you know, before the market has the opportunity to look at it, you know, being able to say, I'm not proud enough to put that out there. Are you guys <laughs> proud enough to put that out there? No, I didn't think so. Okay. And doing that as a team, that's that's the exciting bit, I think, is, you know, it it gets hard. It's a hard road and you have yes. mornings where you wake up and you just want to throw everything in and you just want to go and, you know, oh, I should just go back and get a job. Yep. Because then at least I'd know whether I'm having noodles or bread next week. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and also, so much is taken care for you in a job. There's all is. these things yeah. that are just done. You can turn up at the building every day. You don't have to worry about whether the building's there or... Whether the building's there, whether yes. you remember to pay your, you know, your cloud subscriptions and, your yes. <laughs> and everything that you need. But it's... Um, I think if you started in the first place, um, there's a reason you did that and there's mm -hmm. a reason you wanted to be out there and the team that you build around you are the ones that are going to help you keep going as you as you go through that as you have those tough days you know um, or, or, I'm not going to lie and so I don't have tough days where I sit there and I question things and you know I'll jump on jump online you know probably two or three hours later than I normally would so, you know probably eight o'clock um, and the guys will have found a solution for something. No, you know, they'll say, okay, well that didn't work, but what if we took it in this direction? And all of a sudden, all of that, all of that doubt kind of subsides and it's like, oh, that's really exciting, guys. Mm. I love what you, I love what you're thinking there. That's, you know, 
I don't think anyone would buy it, but let's move from there. You know, yeah. let's let's take that somewhere else. And that's that's I guess how you keep the hunger. Um, well, you need the team. You also need some resilience there too. Yeah. Because it's it's to deal with that. And yeah. you know, sometimes there are occasions when the whole team is sort of in a spot, and you've got to kind of pull yourselves out through the bootstraps. Yeah, and I think um, I guess that's as a business that that's the learning is is build the team as a um, as an individual. And I think it, just about every kind of advisor and mentor that we've we've worked with has said, look, you've just got to have a thick skin. Yep. And it's so true. You need to be able to look someone in the eye who is rubbishing your idea and know that they just don't get it. Yeah. And say, that doesn't mean the idea is bad, I just need to explain it better. Um, yes. You need to be able to take the criticism and say, you know, that's not going to work because, or no one, why would anyone be interested in that? How is that any different to X, Y, and Z? Um, and say, okay, and even if you don't have an answer on the spot, you need to be able to go, okay, they question me. I don't need to pack everything in and, and get upset about this, but I do need to learn the answers for that. I do need to be able to turn around next time and say, the reason it's not like that is because. Yes. You know, the reason we still believe the, in this, even though you've said those things, is because. Yeah. And, you know, it, people talk about it with investors all the time, but it's also really hard with the customer. Yes. When the customer's sitting there saying, well, why wouldn't I just do that this way? You know, and you can sit there and say, you know, the number of times you hear customers these days with with platform-based technology say, well, why wouldn't I just do that with WordPress? And you sort of go, well, I guess you could do it with WordPress, but we're we're not just offering a, a front end. You know, what what we're what we're trying to say is this is a, this is a new way to run your business. Yeah. This is this is an entire platform that starts here and ends here. Yeah, it's transfer. It's not, just, not just an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, th there have been a number of times where I've been standing in front of people with just with no words to come out of my mouth. Yeah. And it's that you know, walk back down to the car and sit in the car for five minutes and rerun it back in your head and go, okay, don't be upset, don't be angry, be rational about it. What did they say and what do you need to say next time? Yeah. So with all of that, all of those challenges. Um, what would you change in the journey you've had so far in roller coaster? Um, that's a really tough question. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, there are things that I look at and say, maybe should have, maybe should have taken the left fork, not the right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe we should have, maybe we should have pushed harder in this direction. Um, on the whole, though, I think we were really lucky with the team that, w that we've been able to build. Um, and I wouldn't change the path we've taken. Uh, we set out to try and do things in a different way um, and to try and really tackle some problems that we saw that were out there that, that no one else seemed to be able to, to remove themselves from far enough to, yeah. to really to really address. Um, so on the whole, I wouldn't change much. Mm -hmm. um, as a, I think working at such a high level, having such an ambitious project, um, a lot of people tell us, uh, and it's the feedback you get all the time um, when you're starting a business is just focus on one thing and just focus on one channel. And that's, that's really good advice, but it's not what drove us. So I think learning what I would have done at the beginning is articulated much, much more clearly that it wasn't the one product that we were building, but oh, we've got all these other dreams. It was that we're working on this and at this very, very top level, and this is what we're going to achieve. And our first step on that path is this product yeah. rather than saying, yeah, I, I guess saying rather than we've got six things this, yeah, or these four are things products. or two things yeah. um, oh, and one day we want to achieve this it would be really flipping that on its head um, especially in the early days and saying we're building this we're building a new way for devices to talk to each other in any environment yes and part of that is we've got a bunch of 
great products that we're able to spin off out of that. Yes. And that's how we're gonna that's how we're gonna build a company. So, um, yeah, learning learning what the path you actually want to take is and how to articulate and that how to articulate what that what that path is to someone who isn't in your head and hasn't been in there for that six to eight to twelve to months to five years that you've been sitting on this idea and flipping it over and flipping it over to get to this really logical point for you um, you know and and really taking people it, goes back to bringing people on that journey I guess yes. you know bring people on that journey of where you want to where you want to go and if that's create one product that is really popular and does one thing really really well that's great mm. if you want to change the world and the way that people communicate for the next 50 years just be honest about that it's okay to dream big some people will sit there and go oh I don't think that's gonna work but if you believe it, <laughs> they'll start believing it. Yes. And, and finally, um, you know, it sounds like it has been a roller coaster. <laughs> um, would you do it again? Um, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in a heartbeat. Um, I think all of us in roller coaster would. Um, I am again with, with something else right at the moment. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's it's been up and down, it's been hard. You have those days where you look at the bank and go, I didn't know bank accounts did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the highs are so much, so much, so much greater than the lows, um, in my experience. Um, and being able to build a team of people who actually believe that they can change the world, even if it's just a little bit of the, a little part of the world, um, is such a rewarding experience, even if it never goes anywhere. I think, you know, as an individual, you can learn a lot about yourself going through that, through that journey. Yes. Um, so even if you want to do it, you know, I think my advice to anyone, even if they've been part of a startup before, even if they've been part of a, um, even a research project in an institution or, or, you know, something like that, and it's not gone well, and they're feeling a little bit jaded by that now, but the experience at the time was good, you know, jump in and do it. Yeah. Do it again. Have another go. Because the energy that you're going to get from having a go, the things you're going to learn about yourself again from having a go, mean that whatever you do next, whether that's going back to a job, whether that's becoming a consultant, whether that's, you know, becoming an employee of a startup on a, on a six-month contract, um, rather than a founder, then, you know, that's that's something that you'll learn and that's that's going to push yourself harder than you could ever push yourself by doing some further study or, or by working in a in a more traditional environment. You yeah. know, if you if you have that motivation to start and if you had it to do it once, you know, it's about finding the right project that makes you want to do it. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for your time today, Andrew. It's Absolute been fantastic pleasure. to hear about your journey, and I wish you and the team at Roller Coaster lots of success in, in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you.